Hello, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT's session on the Network Cabling Part 1. Today we're going to be talking about twisted pair network cabling, then we're going to talk about twisted pair network connectors, and then we will conclude with categories of twisted pair. I have a whole lot of information to cover, and I need to get through this quickly, so let's go ahead and begin this session. And we'll begin by talking about twisted pair network cabling. Most people are familiar with twisted pair cables because they are the standard in the modern land. They are what you see most often when you're looking at network cabling. Twisted pair cables are composed of four pairs of wires contained within an insulating sheath. Each pair of wires is twisted together to reduce electromagnetic interference, which is called EMI. The twist rates differ between the pairs to reduce crosstalk between the pairs, which is a type of EMI. The colors of the pairs of wires are always white orange orange, white blue blue, white green green, and white brown brown. Twisted pair network cabling comes in either unshielded or shielded twisted pair. That would be UTP or STP. The difference is that STP has an additional shield that is either wrapped around each pair of wires or around all four pairs of wires. That shielding reduces the opportunity for EMI or crosstalk, but it is more expensive and a little harder to work with because it's not as flexible. UTP, or unshielded twist to pair, is deployed in the network much more often than STP. There are also plenum and non-plenum types of twisted pair. Most twisted pair cabling is non-plenum grade, but building codes often call for plenum grade cable to be run in plenum spaces. Now a plenum space is that area that is designed to assist in the airflow of a building for HVAC purposes. And most often, the plenum is that space between the false ceiling and the actual ceiling. Plenum cable is jacketed in either a fire retardant cover or in a low smoke PVC jacket. Plenum cables often have a polymer or nylon strand woven into the cabling or into the jacket to help take the weight of hanging cables. This reduces the chance for the cable to stretch, which can cause the pair or pairs of wires inside the jacket to break. Twisted pair is usually either a straight through cable or a crossover cable, but it can also be used to create a rollover or console cable. A straight through cable is used to connect different types of devices together, as in a computer to a switch or a switch to a router while well, a crossover cable is used to connect similar devices together, as in a PC to a PC or a switch to a switch. The straight through and crossover cable use different pinouts to achieve their connections. A rollover or console cable is often required to connect to the console port on a switch or a router. It is quite common for one end of the rollover cable to use an RJ45 connector, while the other end utilizes an RS-232, also called a DB9 connector. So now that I've mentioned those connectors, let's go on to twisted pair network connectors. And we're going to begin with the RJ11. You don't see these very much in what we think of as networking, but you do see them all the time. The RJ11 uses a six position, four contact modular connector. That's a 6P4C modular connector. It can carry data or voice and its common usage is voice communication, telephony. All of your telephone jacks are RJ11s. Then there's the RJ45. This is the one that we always think about when we think about networking with twisted pair cabling. It uses an eight position, eight contact or 8P, 8C modular connector. It can carry data or voice and its common usage is data networking, ethernet. Then there's the RJ48C. It also uses an eight position, eight contact modular connector, 8P, 8C, just like the RJ45. As a matter of fact, it's often thought of as being an RJ45. 
but it's used as the terminating connector at the demark point for T1 lines. And as I said just a moment ago, it's often confused with the RJ45, but the active pins are different. Then we have the UTP coupler, the unshielded twisted pair coupler. It's used to connect UTP cables back to back and still maintain adherence to industry standards. You might still come across a 66 block being used for network connections, but probably not. It's a punch down block that was initially developed to terminate and distribute telephone lines in an enterprise network. So you might still see it for telephony, but it's getting a little bit harder to find it. It was also used in slower speed networks as it can handle data traffic that's rated for CAT3 cabling. Much more likely you'll find a 110 block. Now this is a punch down block that was developed to terminate and distribute twisted pair network cabling. It's capable of handling the signaling requirements of the modern network. I mentioned the DB9 or RS232 connector earlier. Well, here we go. It is a nine pin D subminiature connector developed for asynchronous serial communication between nodes. It was a common type of connector between a computer and an external modem. And as I said earlier, it often makes up one end of the rollover cable. You might come across a DB25, also known as an EIA-232 or RS-232 serial connector. It is a 25-pin D subminiature connector developed for asynchronous serial communication between nodes, just like the DB9, only it was larger. It too provided a type of connection between a computer and an external analog modem. And it's even less common than the DB9. Now let's move on to categories of twisted pair. And we begin with CAT3. CAT3 was rated for up to 10 megabits per second speed. That's 10 base T networking. And it had a maximum distance of 100 meters. By the way, unless I specify all twisted pair cabling has a max distance of 100 meters. That 10 megabits per second wasn't quite fast enough, so then we got CAT5. CAT5 is rated for up to 100 megabits per second speed. That's 100 base T networking. And that still wasn't fast enough, so they developed CAT5E. CAT5E is rated for up to 1 gigabits per second. That's 1,000 base T. Now we have CAT6. CAT6 is rated for up to 10 gigabits per second. That's 10 gigabit Ethernet, or 10 GBE. And with CAT6, you can only get that 10 gigabits per second over a max distance of 55 meters. For some reason, they thought they needed to go more distance than 55 meters, so they developed CAT6A. It has the same speed ratings as CAT6, but it has a max distance of 100 meters, and you can still achieve that 10 gigabits per second networking. Now that concludes this session on Network Cabling Part 1. I talked about twisted pair cabling, then I talked about twisted pair network connectors, and I concluded with the categories of twisted pair cabling. Now on behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this session, and I hope you watch another one soon.